Good evening, class. We are looking at chapter two, equations and inequalities for college algebra. Here's section 2.2, linear equations in one variable. Linear equations in one variable. Section 2.2. So we covered 2.1, the rectangular coordinate systems and graphs, and now we're gonna go look at linear equations in one variable. So the objectives is to solve equations in one variable, algebraically solve rational equations, find a linear equation, given the equation of two lines, determine whether their graphs are parallel or perpendicular, write the equation of a line parallel or perpendicular to a given line. By the way, all of this stuff we have seen in previous courses, just a reminder. This is a rectangular coordinate system, also known as a Cartesian coordinate system. We cut it into four parts known as quadrants. Obviously, uh, in the first quadrant, everything is positive, X and Y. Second one, X is negative. Third one, both of them are negative. And fourth one, only Y is negative. Uh, we have the distance formula following Pythagorean theorem. B is the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 quantity squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared. And the midpoint, you simply add up the x coordinates divided by 2, add up the y coordinates divided by 2. Solving linear equations. Let's see how we do that. A linear equation in one variable is an equation written in the form of ax plus b equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a is the one that can't be zero because then you don't have any x to solve for. So for example, 3x plus 5 is 25 minus 5x, okay? Any value of a variable that results in a true statement is called a solution of the equation. Example one, determine if x equals negative one is a solution to the equation. What equation? Negative 3 times x minus 3 equals minus 4x plus 3 minus 5x. Replace the x here, here, and here with negative 1. And negative 1 and negative 3 is negative 4. Uh, minus 4 times negative 1 is positive 1. This remains as 3. This is plus 5 because minus 5 times minus 1. And as you can see, the product of these two on the left side is a 12 and 4 plus 3 plus 5 is also 12 because this is a true statement. Yes, this is a solution. So of this equation. Of course, even if they don't say it, we have to use the distribution distributive property, which means we are going to distribute number 3. So this remains the same, 12 minus 2x minus 3x minus 6, then 4x plus 12 minus x. On the right side, class, we can put this two into 3x. On the left side, number 12, number negative 6, they add up to positive 6. These two add up to negative 5x. We move the 3x to the left becomes minus 3x. We move the 6 to the right becomes negative 6. You can do it in one shot. Combining these two results in minus 8, 6, and these two in positive 6. Now you are going to divide both sides. by negative eight. So negative six over eight or negative three over four. That would be the final answer.
2x plus 9 equals 14. All you have to do, move the 9. Becomes negative 9 with 14 becomes 5. Divide by 2. We're done. A couple of ways to do that. You can move the five and then multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative two thirds or negative three halves. Or generally speaking, when we deal with fractions, it's really a good practice to get rid of the denominator. So all you have to do multiply both sides by this denominator three. So when you do that, this gives you three times five which is 15. This gives you three times minus two A over three. The threes cancel out. The right side is negative 27. So most of the time I won't write this step because it's redundant. And so I'm gonna move. So basically I would say three times five is 15. Three cancels out the three minus two A, and this is minus 27. I'm gonna move the 15 becomes negative on the other side with negative 27. They add up to negative 42. We divide by negative two. We want to solve this equation, 2 over 5 plus V is 1 half minus 3 over 10. Fractions can be removed by multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator, LCD, of all fractions. No matter how many fractions you have, you have 1, 2, 3, and I hope you recognize the LCD is 10 for all those fractions. If I multiply both sides by 10, every fraction will lose its denominator. So I'm going to multiply the 10 by 2 over 5 by V. I'm going to multiply 10 by 1 half minus 10 times 3 over 10. Now, normally, again, I'm going to skip that and go to the next step. But just to show you, this one cancels out this one, you get two times two is four, okay? This one cancels out this one, you get five. This one cancels out this one, you get negative three. And obviously this is two. Move the four, subtract it from two, you get negative two. Divide by 10, and you get negative 2 over 10 equals negative 1 over 5. I'm going to move on. I'm going to leave this for you to do it on your own. Make a note of it. All you have to do, multiply by L, C, D, both sides. And I hope you recognize for 9, 2, and 6, the least common denominator would be 18. So here's my tip. Multiply both sides by 18. Do the math. 18. A rational equation is an equation that contains one rational expression or more. That's the definition of a rational equation. To solve rational equations, as it was discussed, find the LCD of all rational expressions, in this case, uh, or fractional expressions or fractions. The denominators are six, four, and eight. And I hope uh, you recognize that you have to multiply by LCD and the LCD is 24. Now, in case you want to know why is 24, I'm going to quickly remind you of what we learned in basic math. Number six. 
if you factor it is two times three. Number four is two squared. Number eight is two cubed. So the least common multiple, and now it becomes the LCD is two cubed times three, which is 24. All right, when we do that, this goes away, this becomes four. For this one, when you multiply by this, 24 cancels out the four, and you get six x. When you multiply by this one, 24 cancels out the eight, and you get minus three times three. And so that's what we get. We are going to move the 6x to the left and with 4x becomes negative 2x because we are going to combine like terms on each side of the equation. And there's nothing to combine. So we move things around. Solve and check. So minus 2x is negative 9, divide by negative 2. x is positive 9 halves. And you really should check. Checking takes place with the original equation. I leave it for you to check it. Make sure you uh, check that every day. Three over x plus three equals five. A couple of different ways of handling it. One would be just to multiply both sides by LCD, namely x plus three. Needless to say, x can't be negative three. Let me explain this concept. First of all, x plus three is the denominator. You multiply both sides by it. Why is it that x can't be negative three? Anytime you have a variable in the denominator, if it's a number, you have nothing to worry about. If it's a variable involved, in this case, x plus three, can x plus 3 be 0? If you say it equal to 0 becomes negative 3, and the answer is no, therefore x cannot be negative 3. Meaning, you go through the process. If for any reason you end up with negative 3 as the answer, then that's a not an acceptable answer. It's called extraneous solutions. So when you multiply this by the left side becomes just 3, by the right side becomes 5 times x plus 3, which is 5x plus 15. you move the 15, becomes negative, and so you have negative 12. Well, it's 5x, you divide both sides by five, and x becomes negative 12 over five as the final answer, everybody. We want to solve this equation. As you can see, it's a rational function. You look at the denominators are 4, 2, 4, and therefore 4 is the LCD. You multiply both sides by 4. Uh, when you multiply this one by 4, this goes away and becomes 3x. When you multiply 4 by 1 half, you get 2. When you multiply this by 4, this goes away. So the, the right side is very clear. Uh, you're going to move things around as follows. You're going to subtract the 2x, and then you move the 2. And you get that. Okay. So x equals negative 5, as always, you can check with the original equation.
there is no variable here in the denominator, as you can see. If there is a variable in any denominator, exclude any value that makes any of them zero since division by zero is undefined. Any value that makes a denominator zero is not a solution and it's called an extraneous solution. So for example, this one, we should exclude zero because the first one, X can't be zero. The second one gives you the same answer. Now we're gonna multiply both sides by LCD. And I hope you recognize the LCD is, okay, the denominator is X, the denominator is X, the denominator is four here, therefore LCD is four X. So what happens when we multiply this by four X, four X cancels out the X, you get two times, you get four times two eight, four X cancels out the X, you get four times five 20, 4x cancels out the 4, and x times negative 1 gives you minus x. So I hope you can go from here to here. One more time. This x cancels out this x, you get 4 times 2 is 8. This x cancels out this x, you get 4 times, you get 4 times 5, 20. And for the second one, For this one, the four cancels out, the X remains times minus one. And obviously, minus X is minus 12, X is positive 12. And you should check with what you wrote here. X can't be zero, so we are in good shape because X is a number. That is not zero. All right, we want to solve this. And first and foremost, we are going to multiply by the LCD, which is the product of 3x plus 1 and x. That's how you find this, because there's nothing in common. And this is being repeated. Also, according to this one, X can't be negative one third. According to this one, X can't be zero. I hope everybody can see why. Again, the LCD is the product of these two. So we're going to multiply both sides by that. X can't be zero here. X can't be minus one third here and here. So the left side, we just lose the 3x plus one and it becomes 2x and you're done with the left side. What happens if I wanna multiply it by this? Just the first one. I hope you recognize the x goes away and we get 3x plus one times one or simply 3x plus one. So this will give us three X plus one times one. When you multiply it by this guy, three X plus one go, goes away, you get X times six X and don't forget the negative sign. Okay. To solve this, we're gonna bring it to the same side as follows. First, because this is negative six X squared class, let's just write it down. Okay, we are going to move everything this way. So we get six X squared plus two X. This becomes minus three X. This becomes minus one. And the reason I'm bringing it on this side because I want the leading term have a positive leading coefficient, two X and minus three X. will add up to negative x. This is simple factoring. We discuss the factoring with more details later on, but you should be able to handle this because this is one, okay? So the way you do that, open up a couple of parentheses. As you know, six can be three times two or one times six. And negative one, you have no choice to go with one and one, one of them negative. So it's a good practice 
to start with this. And when you do that, if you go with three X here, two X here, then you just decide, do I put the one here or negative one here? Do I put the one here or negative one here? And it's a trial and error. Notice what should work is the middle term. This works out to two X. This works out to minus three X. And the sum should be minus X. And it is, again, we will go over that with more details later on, although you have seen factoring before. So three X plus one, is zero, that means x is negative one third. Two x minus one is zero, that means x equals one half. Now we go back, we notice over here we wrote x can't be zero, so we are in good shape. And then x can't be negative one third, we are going to get rid of that. Which means in the process, somehow, this equation has this solution, but the original one doesn't. This is not acceptable for the original equation. It's called an extraneous solution. All right, we want to solve this. Again, it's a rational equation. We have to multiply both sides by LCD. And to do so, we want to make sure every fraction in the denominator has a factored form of that. So this is fine. This is fine. This happened to be the product of these two. I hope you recognize that because as you recall from basic factoring, we want two numbers. The product is 21. The sum is 10. Okay. 21 is the product of three and seven. So what is the LCD? Well, it's simply this one in the form of a product. We're gonna use it A plus seven times A plus three. And also none of the denominators can, can be zero. This can't be zero, so it can't be negative seven. This can't be zero, it can't be negative three. The same thing goes here. You're gonna multiply both sides by LCD and you're gonna say it can't be those numbers. We're going to multiply everything by this LCD. And so what happens is, if I multiply this by this guy, okay, I want to make sure everybody understands what's happening here. If I'm just concerned with this one, this cancel each other, and I get A plus, uh, what did I do? I meant to cancel. First of all, I need a different color. I meant to say this. So all I need is 2a times a plus 3. So for this part, I get 2a times a plus 3 or a plus 3 times 3. This one simply multiply by this. That's not a big deal. Let's go to the right side. When you multiply this one by this one, you just get one because a plus seven times a plus three cancels out a plus seven times a plus three. What happens when you multiply this guy by this guy? A plus three, let me actually show you. Uh, a plus three cancels out A plus three. So you get minus A times A plus seven. Oh, this is plus, I let me erase it. This is plus everybody, I thought it was minus because I went through that, so let's do it again. This times this 
a plus three cancel each other. So we get a plus seven, and then this is plus a times. So this is what we get. So what happens next? All we have to do distribute and simplify. First and foremost, we remember that this is the product of these two. So we have the negative sign in front of that. Okay, same thing, we write it here because it was a product and don't forget there's a negative sign. Now if I distribute the 2a, I get 2a squared plus 6a. This one, I get the same thing. Everything changes sign, minus a squared, minus 10a, minus 21. The right side, one plus a squared plus 7a. So let's put the right side in descending order, a squared plus 7a plus one. Let's combine like terms on the left side. This to add up to a squared. This to add up to negative 4a. Everything else remains unchanged. We can drop the a squared from both sides just because they are identical. You don't have to move it. They are identical. You don't have to move and drop. They are identical on both sides of the equation. We're going to move this. We make it minus 7a with minus 4a is negative 11a. Then I move this minus 21 becomes plus 21, with one becomes 22. Divide by negative 11, a is minus two. Check, all is fine. Needless to say, it's a good practice to check with the original equation. Proportions. A proportion is an equation of the form A over B equals C over D, where the denominators B and D can't be zero. So here's an example of a proportion. Also, proportions may also be solved by cross multiplication as follows. If this is a true proportion, then their cross product must be identical. So AD must be equal to BC. So it's the same as multiplying both sides by LCD, but just basically do the cross product. So two times two X plus three is five times three X minus one. And again, this goes for these two denominators. They cannot be zero. 3x minus 1, set it equal to 0, becomes 1 third excluded. 2x plus 3, set it equal to 0, negative 3 halves excluded. When I say excluded, it means not equal to. Uh, distribute, we get 4x plus 6. Distribute, we get 15x minus 5. We are going to move things as follows. So this is 11x. This is 11, x becomes one. Yeah, pretty straightforward, everybody. The slope, as you recall, it's known as rise over run, delta y over delta x, or y sub two minus y sub one over x sub two minus x sub one. So here's the change in y known as the rise, y sub two minus one, y sub one, as you go from one point to the next, as you go from p to q. And here's the run or change in x. So that's the definition of a slope. 
which means in application, the average rate of change of Y with respect to X. That's the slope. That is the slope, everybody. That's the meaning of the slope, everybody. Now, when you look at this example, the slope is undefined because rise over run, there is no run, and you can pick up two points. If you put this into this equation, you see the denominator becomes zero, and therefore, for any vertical line, the slope is undefined class. If you want to find the slope of this line containing the following points, we just follow the equation here, y sub two minus three minus y sub one, four, over x sub two minus x sub one, two minus negative one, which makes it two plus one. The top is negative seven, the bottom is three, and it's minus seven thirds as the final answer. Okay, everyone, does that make sense? All right, uh, for the following lines, L1 having those points, L sub two, L sub three, L sub four, graph all four lines on the same set of coordinate axis. I just wanna show you something in regards to this question, which is, really important. You can calculate those slopes easily. Use this formula and you calculate them and you're done. It's a very simple uh, case. I don't believe anybody has any problem with that. Now, the point I want to make here would be the following graphs. Positive slope, negative slope, slope that is undefined, slope that is, that is zero for a vertical line undefined, for a horizontal line zero. When the slope of a line is positive, the line slants upward from left to right. In other words, I will write that in a meaning when the in a moment. When the slope of a line is negative, the line slants downward from left to right, L sub two. When the slope is zero, the line is horizontal. When the slope is undefined, the line is vertical. The first one I want to mention, this one means when X gets larger, Y gets larger. This one means when X gets larger, Y gets smaller. So this has got to do with the negative and this has got to do with the positive slope. So these are some general ideas I want you to know. We're going to graph the uh, graph lines given a point and a slope. You can always make up two points and graph it. I want you to know that. But how does that work? Draw a line that contains this point 3, 2 and has a slope of 3 fourths. If the slope, remember the meaning of a slope, rise over run. So if you think about this number rise, the change in y over change in x. So you add for the x, you add the bottom, for the y, you add the top. In other words, if you have three fourths, add four to x, the bottom to x, and the top three to y. So if I want to add four to x, I'm going to add four to three, and I get seven. If I want to add 3 to y, I get 5. 
So I can see what happens is that from three comma two, I get, I go four to the right, three up gives me the second point and I graph it. That's the concept. Now you can think of this if you want. for example, as negative three over negative four, which means instead of adding, you're gonna subtract four to X from X and you're gonna subtract three from Y and it results in negative one comma negative one. That's another point. Somewhere there. Or you can think of it as six over eight, add eight to X and six to Y. I mean, there are infinitely many points you can do. When you look at uh, this one, anytime the answer is, uh, the slope is negative, you have to decide where to put the negative sign, either at top or at the bottom. You can keep it in front of a fraction, but if you wanna make up a new point. So for example, you can write minus four over five or four over minus five. If you write it in this fashion, now minus five gets added to X. Minus five and three, negative two. And four gets added to Y, that means six. If instead of that, if I use M equals negative four over five, now I'm gonna add positive five to X, negative four to Y, and I get eight comma negative two. That's this point, okay? so. Given three, two, the run is negative five. So go to the left. And the rise is four, go up. That gives you the new point. Or you can go the other way around. You make the run positive here and the rise negative. This is in case you want to go with that methodology. All right, we want to graph this. I hope you recognize x equals minus two is simply a vertical line. So this is the uh, x-intercept negative to zero. However, you can pick up a few points. What really matters is the x-intercept and then you come up with the vertical line. VL, short for vertical line. As the equation x equals a, the slope is undefined and the x-intercept is located at a zero. So in this case, negative two zero. If I said uh, x equals one would be this one. Find the equation of a horizontal line containing the point. You don't have to do anything. If the pair is given, horizontal line y equals negative four. Vertical line x equals two. In the case of a horizontal line, the equation is y equals b, so y equals negative four, the slope is zero, and the y-intercept is located at zero b. Okay, zero b, in this case, zero, negative four, this point. So very straightforward. Different, different forms of line. Everybody remembers the standard form AX plus BY equals C. So we want to find the equation of a line with slope of negative three, and it contains the point negative one comma four. So here's the standard form everybody remembers. Here's the slope intercept form Y equals MX plus B, which means just for the sake of argument, if you solve this for Y, and here's the point slope. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X of one. 
So various formats. So if you want to stick with that y minus y1, that means y minus 4 equals m negative 3x minus x sub 1, that means x minus minus 1. And that makes this plus 1. You distribute the negative 3. You move the negative 4 becomes positive 4. And here's the equation. You should always put it in slope intercept form unless asked otherwise. And basically you can pick up a couple of pairs and graph it if you want. Uh, one of the pairs from here, I hope you recognize it's the y-intercept of zero one. But in any event, if you want to go with the methodology that was discussed, we have negative one comma four. And the slope is negative three. Let me just write that. Okay. As for example, three. minus three over one, okay? You have to put it in a fractional form that it becomes clear. So if you write it as such, then the run is positive one, the rise is negative three. That's what they are showing here. And again, you don't have to do that. You have this pair, you have the y-intercept, you make it. Look better from here. We have zero comma one. Okay, as the y intercept. So you have this pair and this pair connect them under that. Find the equation of a line given two points. Find an equation of a line L containing the point negative one comma four and three comma negative one, graph the line. Uh, again, I'm giving you the formulas uh, for the slope and the point slope. So first and foremost, uh, we're gonna use this formula to find the slope. So y sub two minus y sub one minus one minus four over x sub two minus x sub one. Okay, so uh, three minus negative one, this makes it plus one. So the numerator is negative five. So negative five over four, you can put the negative in front of a fraction bar in the numerator, in the denominator. Normally, you don't put it in the denominator unless we want to come up with the next point and so forth and discuss the rise and run. So y minus y one, equals m times x minus x sub one. And we are going to use one of these two points. If we put, if we use this one, y minus four equals m minus five fourths, x minus minus one, which means plus one. And if we distribute, we get minus five fourths x minus five fourths. If we move the negative four, becomes positive four. Because we wanna add it to negative five fourths, we're gonna change the four to 16 over four. And we get this, minus five fourths plus 11 fourths. And by the way, you should re recognize right from here that you do have this well intercept. However, uh, you can graph, and I highly recommend you find all the intercepts. Uh, x is zero, find y, y is zero, find x. So if you plot those pairs, for example, here's negative one, four, right? Negative one, four. And here's three, negative one, and now if you connect them, sometimes we just put a line like that, sometimes in double arrows, 
meaning it continues indefinitely, it has the same meaning. Find the slope m and y intercept b of this equation and graph it. Well, that means put it into the form of y equals mx plus b. That means solve for y. We are going to move the 3x. And we're going to divide everything by negative 2, and we get y equals 3 halves x minus 3. As you can see, the slope is 3 halves. Here's the y-intercept. And I want to explain, this is b. The y-intercept really should be written in the form of a pair, 0, comma, negative 3. And I can't um, emphasize this enough. Okay, so that's the location, everybody. Now, of course, uh, I can get the um, x-intercept, and it's easier to get it from here, for example, just for the sake of argument, so you see how that works. If you set y equal to 0, then 3x becomes 6, x becomes 2, and the pair is 2 comma 0, okay? If you were to use this concept of a rise over run, you can write m is 3 halves, so add the bottom, which is 2 to x, the top, which is 3 to y, and it gives you it happened to give you the x-intercept. It may not. So 3 up, 2 over, that gives you the 2, 0. Connect the 2, and you're done. All right, let's graph lines written in general standard form using intercepts. Here's the standard form AX plus BY equals C, where A, B, and C are real numbers. A and B are not both zero. Uh, one of them can be zero. So we want to graph the linear uh, equation that we have here, 3X plus 2Y equals 6 by finding intercepts. So you set X equal to zero. You find y, you set y equal to 0, you find x. When y is 0, it's called the x-intercept. 3x equals 6. Divide by 3, you get 2. And it means the x-intercept has coordinates 2, comma 0. Now, if you set x equal to 0, two y equals 6, y becomes 3, and that means the y-intercept is 0, comma 3. I highly recommend you get to the habit of writing as a pair. And now all you have to do, connect these two points, and that's your line. Parallel and perpendicular lines. Two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have equal slopes and different y-intercepts. And let's quickly look at the uh, proof. If two lines are parallel, the right triangle created are similar 
because they have two equal angles. This angle is equal to this angle. This is 90 degrees, which makes the third angle equal, by the way, as well. Therefore, the ratio of the corresponding sides are equal. That's the definition of a similar figures. Okay, that's the definition of a similar figures in general. And I hope everybody um, remembers that from before. In any event, and so if that is the case, then the ratio, if they are similar, the ratio of rise to run for this one and the ratio of rise to run to this one must be identical as a result of being similar. And so therefore, if we call M sub one as the slope for one, M sub two for the other one, they must be identical, but they can't have an equal intercepts, y-intercepts, because if the y-intercepts are the same, then of course it's the same line, okay? If both, both of these are equal, it's the same line. All right, we are going to move on to perpendicular lines. Two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if their slopes m sub one and m sub two are negative reciprocal of each other. We can write in the following manner. M sub two is negative one over M sub one or M sub one times M sub two is negative one. They make a 90 degree angle at the point of intersection. So I hope everybody's fine with that and it should make sense to everybody. Okay. Sounds good. We are going to move on everybody. So M sub two is negative one over M sub one. There are different ways of writing them, okay? The product is negative one. One is the negative reciprocal of the other. However you like that, it's fine as long as um, we can get to one of those, it's good enough. A, a quick proof of that. Okay, let us choose the lines such that they intersect at the origin. We do it on purpose. And pick a point on each line with the same X coordinate. So if I, Draw a vertical line. This point and this point must have the same X coordinate. I hope you recognize that. Okay, everybody? Okay. So with that being the case, let me just erase it. So we choose that, let me erase it, didn't get erased. We choose that so that they intersect at the origin. They have the same X coordinate. And let's choose X to be any number you want. You can put one, two, five, three, but one is the easiest one. You can choose anything you want for one for this. But if you choose one, The y coordinates of these points, it has some y coordinates, become equal to the corresponding slopes. Why is that? Take a look. We define m as y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So, for example, if you do it for this one or for this one, okay, this one, m sub 1 minus 0, 1 minus 0 becomes m sub 1. So, I hope you see that how this thing works out, okay? So it's uh, pretty straightforward, everybody. Okay, for one line, you can show it for the other one. Now, if this is a 90 degree angle, Pythagorean theorem says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So OA squared, OA squared plus 
OB squared equals A B squared. And we use the distance formula. which means OA squared, if I want this one, M sub two minus zero quantity squared plus one minus zero quantity squared. If I want OB, uh, one minus zero quantity squared plus M, M sub one minus zero quantity squared. If I want <clears throat> this distance AB, okay, I have one minus one quantity squared plus M sub two minus M sub one quantity squared. All of them under the square root, everybody. All of them under the square root. However, the reason we won't write the square root because we are squaring both sides. It makes it easier, okay? It makes it easier. So we use the distance formula and that should take care of the business here. So let's see what happens next. We are going to simplify each side. Uh, this is one squared, this is m2 squared, this is one squared, this is m1 squared, this goes away, zero. Then a minus b quantity squared, a minus b, I write it here for you, I hope you remember that, it's a squared minus two ab plus b squared. Therefore, this one is, m2 squared minus 2 m, m2 m1 or m1 m2 plus m1 squared. Okay, so I hope uh, everybody understands what I'm trying to say here because it has got to do with what? Knowing perfect square trinomials. Okay. So what happens now? Let's see. I see M2 squared on the left. I see M2 squared up on the right. I see M1 squared on the left. I see M1 squared on the right. And then these two numbers add up to two on the left and the right, the right side is minus two M1, M2. Therefore, m sub two is minus one over m sub one. Pretty straightforward. So we just prove that. Show the two lines are parallel perpendicular or neither. We want to find the relationship between the two. All we have to do is solve for y. To solve for y here, we're going to move the negative three x. And we're going to divide everything by two. And so what is the slope? Three halves. What is the y-intercept six? Namely, zero comma six. For this one, we are going to move six x and we're going to divide both sides by negative y becomes 3 halves x. The slope is 3 halves. y intercept is at 0. More precisely, this means 0, 6. This means 0, 0. And they are parallel because these two are identical. The two slopes are identical. You don't have to worry about the graph. They didn't ask, but roughly this is the sketch. Notice the zero six here. Notice the zero zero here. The two lines are parallel because they have identical slopes. 
Find an equation of a line that contains this pair and is parallel to this line. So first and foremost, we have to solve for y to find the slope of this line, which means we are going to move the 3x. Uh, then we're going to divide everything by negative 4. We get y equals 3 fourths x minus 3. This is our slope. So because we want it to be parallel, m1 equals m2 equals 3 fourths. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x of 1. So y minus 3 equals m 3 fourths x minus x of 1. That means x minus minus 1 or x plus 1. So as you can see, uh, this becomes plus 1. And so we have... Uh, 3 fourths x plus 3 fourths. This moves becomes plus 3, and we get 3 times 4, 12 plus 3, 15 over 4. This would be the final answer. Same situation, so those are the two lines in case. Same situation, but we want it to be perpendicular to the same line. So now, if the slope of this line, we show that it's three fourths, the one perpendicular to it is the negative reciprocal of this number, negative four thirds, everybody, negative four thirds. And so y minus y1, that means y minus 3 equals m, which is negative 4 thirds times x minus minus 1 or x plus 1. And we're going to simplify it. We're going to distribute. Of course, this is plus 1. So we have minus 4 thirds x. minus four thirds minus three moves comes three or nine thirds and it gives us five thirds. Uh, by the way, you should always, all of these questions we've been doing, you want to check them, okay? And checking, you can, uh, plug in the pair again, it should work. And if you were to graph it, this will look like that. So just in case they didn't ask for the graph. Given A having coordinates negative three and one and B having coordinates five and four, Find the equation of a perpendicular bisector. I'm going to call it PB for short. L of the line segment AB. I want to define that for everybody and to see what's going on. A line bisector cuts a line segment into two equal parts. In this case, the line segment AB is being cut into two equal lengths by the bisector line, line L. If the line L crosses at a right angle, it is called the perpendicular bisector. So of AB, otherwise it is simply a bisector. So if you have a line segment, here's the point in between. So if I cut this with any line, it's a bisector. Any line is a bisector. Specifically, when the line makes a 90 degree angle, when it cuts it, then we call it perpendicular bisector, okay? That's the concept. Let me clean up the mess. So 
So here's one of them, A having coordinates negative three and one, B having coordinates five and four. When we connect them, we have to find the midpoint. The midpoint formula is X sub one plus X sub two divided by two, Y sub one plus Y sub two divided by two. So add the X's minus three and five divided by two, X the Y, uh, add the Y's one and four divided by two. So we get one and five halves. So this, is the midpoint between these two lines. So we have this point. What is the slope of this line? If we were to extend this indefinitely on both sides, this would create a line. What would be the slope of this line? Rise over run. Y sub two minus Y sub one. That means four minus one over X sub two minus X sub one. That means five minus negative three. And that means three at top, five plus three, eight at the bottom. Why do we need the slope of this line? Because the line that is perpendicular bisector makes a 90 degree angle. And the slope for that must be the negative reciprocal of this negative eight thirds. So. PB for short, the perpendicular bisector has the slope negative reciprocal of that, which is minus eight thirds. Now we have this slope and we have this pair, this pair. And we are, we are coming up with the solution. Y minus Y1, that means Y minus five halves equals m, that means minus eight thirds, times x minus x sub one, that means x minus one. Uh, distribute, you get minus eight third x, distri distribute, you get plus eight thirds, and move this, and you make it five halves. And all you have to do, add up these two, these two. the common denominator is six, So this becomes two times eight, 16. This becomes three times five, 15. They add up to 31. So we have y equals minus eight third x plus 31 over six. Now zero comma 31 over six is clear. I'm gonna leave it for you to figure out the x intercept at 31 over eight actually. So uh, I highly recommend you uh, come up with the answer here, okay? And then if you plot, you can get the line. Needless to say, we already have this point. One more point will uh, do the job and uh, that would be the line roughly. It may not be to scale. And um, this is the line AB, equation three over eight times X plus 17 over eight. And this is the, uh, perpen the perpendicular bisector having this equation. Here's the last question, class. We want to find an equation of a line that contains this pair and is perpendicular to this line. So first and foremost, we are going to solve for y and we are going to move the x first. Then we are going to divide by three. Okay, and by the way, that's the point, okay? One comma negative two. Uh, also this pair, the, the equation itself, okay, if we, if we continue actually with the line itself, let's actually do that. So let's go back from the get-go. First, let's craft this point, one comma negative two. I hope you realize if I choose X to be zero, Y becomes two. If I choose Y to be zero, X becomes six. And that's the line. Now we want to find an equation that contains this point so, and is perpendicular to this, right? So all we have to do, find the slope. The slope for this one
divide by three and you get negative one third x plus two. The slope for the given line is negative one third. The one that is perpendicular to that is the negative reciprocal of that or positive three. y minus y1, that means y minus negative 2 or plus 2 equals m3 times x minus 1. Move the 2 becomes negative 2, so 3x minus 5. Uh, I can use that pair to graph it, also I can say, well, clearly zero minus five is the y-intercept. And if I set this equal to zero, five thirds comma zero is the x-intercept. And I can clearly see zero minus five and five thirds zero and connect them. And all of those three roughly will be on the same line. 